Finally, we have House File 2205 from Representative Dan Dabney. I will move House File 2205 to be laid over for possible inclusion. We have before us House File 2205. Representative Dabney, please tell us about your bill and welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to present House File 2205 uh, to you and the committee today. Uh, I'm pleased uh, to have this bill establishing a direct admissions pilot project. This is an exciting opportunity for Minnesota high school students to recognize the great public post-secondary opportunities to be found right here in their home state, and also for those students to be recognized for their high school achievements. In establishing a direct admissions program, Minnesota would join other states across the country, including Arizona, Florida, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Texas, Illinois, Idaho, Colorado, and importantly, our own neighbors of South Dakota and Iowa. Obviously, successfully navigating the transition from high school to whatever post-secondary choice a student makes, uh, a student and their families choose is challenging. We also need to recognize we need more students successfully making that transition for the economy that's, that's emerging. Like many of you, I know this challenge personally, having guided my daughter through her college selection process three years ago, a happy go for today, and being in the midst of it with my high school senior son currently. But being in a white, middle-class, stable, two-parent family with parents who have more college degrees than I care to divulge between the two of us uh, still made the process maddening, confusing, and uncertain. Now imagine doing that without all the family assets and experience with the process of college selection, scholarship, and financial aid application. House File 2205 establishes a pilot program in consultation with key stakeholders in both the K-12 and higher education field. It challenges them to develop and if feasible implement a direct admission program and, and importantly, report back to the legislature on their findings and recommendations just next year. Madam Chair, with me today is Ms. Meredith Fergus from the Office of Higher Education, who can speak uh, to the specifics of the bill. Thank you, uh, Re Representative Dabney. And we will move to Ms. Fergus, and we would like to make sure that we have enough time for a number of questions. So thank you for being at, the, at our hearing today. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members. For the record, my name is Meredith Fergus. I am the Director of Research for the Minnesota Office of Education. It's good to see you again today. Um, I was involved in the planning process for the direct admissions proposal, and I'm happy to answer questions. The Office of Higher Education is excited about the proposal, as it is included in the governor's budget as well. We think this is a really key kind of change we can make in Minnesota to facilitate the enrollment of low-income students and students of color into our public colleges within the state and really advance the state's attainment goal as well as our equity initiatives. Thank you. Thank you. And then members, do we have any um, questions on the bill? Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Davney, always mm -hmm. looking the sartorial splendiferous that you are. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Albright. Uh, Madam Chair, Representative Dabney, um, I'm just looking at the fiscal impact of mm -hmm. $925,000. And I certainly uh, empathize with your um, situation, uh, having uh, sent uh, three children through higher education and having to have endured the FAFSA uh, um, debacle that they are on various occasions, I can certainly empathize with that. But one point, uh, Representative Dabney, in terms of opening up the uh, aperture a little bit uh, with regard to uh, uh, availing individuals, uh, high school students to an awareness about the opportunity to go to college, I'm struck by the opportunity that might be just prevailing us in the face with regard to not just a letter, but everyone has an iPhone or an Android, uh, how about using some of those fundings to alert people uh, through text or an email uh, to the opportunities and to the supports that already exist. Uh, taking nothing away from uh, the awareness 
and the approach to make sure that people are aware of uh, how to um, avail themselves of college, but um, expedite that possibly in a, in a manner that uh, is more efficient and certainly amenable to what everyone is carrying around in their, uh, their backpack or in their briefcase. Madam Chair? Yes, Representative Dabney. Uh, Madam Chair, Representative Albright, uh, thank you for the creative ideas. Uh, I think it's one thing to tell me, hey, you could go look over here. It's another thing to tell me that I have been admitted uh, tentatively to an institution of higher learning. Uh, I think that changes lives and it accomplishes what I think is your goal, if I understand you correctly, of incenting students to follow those links and follow the, that uh, breadcrumb trail to the sort of opportunity we as a state want and need them to follow. Representative Albright, did you have a follow-up? I did, um, and, and Representative Downey, a little bit different take on it. I, 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 it's a yes and as to a, a earlier testifier, um, to make them aware of the opportunities and to where to direct them, not so much to announce that they have been accepted, but uh, before that happens, uh, to open up the aperture and let them know of the uh, accessibility points for help with filling out the FAFSA, help with um, uh, seeing what accreditation and or uh, standards are necessary uh, to uh, fulfill the obligation and the requirements to enter into college uh, so that they can seek the proper help and not be redundant. And, and if that's to uh, make an appointment with someone, uh, that that would be uh, streamlined in that regard. And, and just trying to uh, expedite it with the resources and the, uh, the pipelines that already exist. Uh, and, and maybe we'll find that through this study, but just trying to uh, uh, expedite it, uh, get us into gear faster than uh, through um, an, another uh, commission. Representative Erickson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this question is for Ms. Fergus. Uh, could you provide us with the link to two or three of these programs, and I don't know if they're pilots in other states, but uh, so that we can do a, a, con, a comparison and a contrast on uh, the Minnesota proposal versus what they've done in other states. Thank you. Rep, um, Ms. Vergas. Um, Madam Chair, Representative Erickson, we'd be happy to. The primary program, which launched approximately four years ago, is Idaho Direct Admissions, and the immediate result was Idaho students saw a three percentage point increase in college going within one year of implementation. So that's what we're hoping for here. Representative Erickson, did you have a follow-up? Well, Madam Chair, I'm interested in the policies in the uh, legislation that was passed and the funding that was provided. Uh, not so much yet in the results, but you know, just it, is our process of going about this similar to what other states did, or are we doing something that's far different? Thank you. Ms. Fergus. Madam Chair, Representative Erickson, and this also partly in response to Representative Albright's uh, comment. Um, the one, Minnesota does a lot of things well. The one area we actually have not invested in is technology that allows a high school to talk to a college. We rely predominantly on a paper-based system of transcripts. Though we may PDF them now and email them, we certainly don't transfer the data in XML format like most other states do. We don't send adequate data to the Minnesota Department of Education for them to produce a transcript. And we don't have concurrent systems across our high schools, districts, and colleges that allow IT alignment in the manner that would really bring down the cost of this proposal dramatically. So some of that is to be expected as a cost, which is built into this fiscal note. And we're hoping that this can serve as a kind of starting point to resolving that misalignment technologically. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I uh, see no further um, hands up. I will um, uh, turn it back to Representative Davney for uh, closing remarks. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you, and, and members of the committee, thank you for your time and attention today. Uh, I found Ms. Fergus's uh, most recent comments on uh, our lack of investment in the IT infrastructure that students need for us to support and facilitate them to be powerful. Uh, by 
focusing on low income and BIPOC students finishing high school successfully and helping them transition to post-secondary, uh, we help Minnesota uh, become uh, a richer state. We help it develop uh, to the next generation of Minnesotans. And I believe that's our obligation uh, as a legislature. And I hope for your support for uh, this language uh, moving forward. Uh, and I appreciate the time and opportunity to uh, present this bill that I'm very excited about today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you, uh, Representative Dabney and Ms. Fergus. I will renew my motion that House File 2205 be laid over for possible inclusion in the Higher Education Finance Omnibus Bill. The bill is laid over.